Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Well, of course, the immortal theme from the Anedian line, perhaps a little bit out of place in this particular subject, but a nautical theme. We're going very nautical today. Because, finally, um, as somebody said actually um, when I did a bit of a announcement sort of posting on YouTube with a bit of a trailer, uh, and I was quoting James Bond, and Q having a conversation about what's coming next, a bloody big ship, as James Bond, Daniel Craig said. And by the way, I'm wearing James Bond, Daniel Craig's uh, naval, what was it, James Bond Commander's naval watch today. Very nautical theme all round. Uh, so we're all going to be jolly jack tars and go the full, the full Royal Navy on us, you know. Anyway, the important thing about this, of course, is getting to the point really, uh, the comment that was made to me by one of the uh, the subscribers was oh this is the holy grail of Matchbox kits and of course for Matchbox May what better kit to show you courtesy, purely courtesy of our good friend Jason from Model Kit Stuff who's um, familiar to many of you I'm sure with his own YouTube channel uh, which has got a very strong nautical theme, much stronger than me, you've got to say. I'm not, I'm not very informed about ships, as you'll probably discover soon. Um, but he acquired this, I think he got it from uh, on eBay, from what he was telling me. And uh, they are very hard to get hold of, I think he paid, I think he paid around £160, pounds, thereabouts. Uh, and he was saying to me that to get, it's not, it's not mint, the box is, uh, there's, there's a few issues, the box is not mint, as you can see. Um, but it's not bad, it's actually better than I was expecting, I'm fair, so yeah, I'm quite sort of pleased really. Uh, and it's such a huge box, I mean it's hard to keep a box that size mint under any circumstances, unless you stick it away in the warehouse with the Lost Ark, well, we've talked about that before of course. But it is quite hard to keep such a big box, you know, good, and I think from what he was saying, the person he's probably bought this from, I think they've had it in like a garage or a shed or something, uh, and it's got some spots of paint on it and a few other issues where there's some of the... Uh, uh, some of the cardboard uh, and the uh, print work has been damaged by something, perhaps damp, but I don't know. He also tells me that the decals are not great. So now I haven't owned it yet at all. So it is, you know, I've seen it fresh, you've seen it fresh. But he reliably informs me, and he knows these, um, these naval uh, models much more than I. And he said to get a mint example of this, you're going to pay at least £200. Um, now, I'm sure that the, the, we talked about this actually, he and I. We were trying to figure out, neither of us really knew about the numbers that were produced. Now, I'm pretty sure that because of the cost of this, I mean, when it came out, it's 79, I think it is. Um, when it came out, I think they were costing something around about the sort of seven to eight pound mark. It's quite a lot of money, you know. Um, now, two to three hundred pounds, if you want a super mint example, like you could pay as much as three hundred for this, if there's somebody out there, I think there have been examples that have changed hands for that sort of money, in premium, you know, literally unmarked condition, but you won't find many of those around, sadly, so, anyway, it doesn't matter for him, because he said, he is going to build it, and he was saying, he was, he was talking about maybe having a, uh, a build, because other people popped up, saying, oh, I've got one of those, I'm, and we should build it, I should build mine, and I should build mine, and I was like, what do you say? You're going to build it? What? I was having a, I mean, he didn't have much consideration for my feelings when he said this to me face to face. I nearly had a heart attack, to be honest, but there we go. <laughs> That's just me. It's his to do with as he pleases. And, and same with you, of course, all of you. Um, if it were premium mint condition, uh, I, I can see exactly where it's coming from, really, because if it was premium mint condition, then you'd have to think, ah, uh, maybe not, you know. But because it is a bit biased and there's some issues inside as well. Um, he also tells me that some parts are warped. I haven't seen them yet, but that's what he's telling me. Uh, so why don't we crack in and have a good look at this. You're going to have to forgive my complete ignorance of naval, naval terms. In fact, I was actually having a bit, of a, uh, a bit of fun with Jason. I said to him about... I was, only, I was only half joking. I said, where exactly, what exactly is the pooped, the poop deck? <laughs> because I've seen fa that episode of Family Guy where Peter Griffin and his wife, the one where Lois gets killed by Stewie, shot, shot dead. So we thought. Um, and, and I won't go to that, I won't tell you the scene. Those of you, most of you that's watching this will know this uh, episode, I'm sure. Uh, and I don't think Jason does know it, so it's fine. But um, yeah, I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't go into details, but... Peter Griffin has sort of 
warped my mind into thinking the poop deck is something completely different. Anyway, apparently the poop deck is the is the deck on a tall ship, like in the Nelson era, the eight, 1900s, sorry, 1800s, 19th century. And it's the very top deck at the back where all the flags are, he tells me. So I learned something already. So there you go. I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more. So why don't we have a look at... The Flower Class Corvette, the 72nd scale. As James Bond said, a bloody big ship. Uh, and it says here, it's got, nice, it's got nice artwork, it's great. I mean, the actual uh, presentation from Matchbox is brilliant, I've got to say. Uh, right up my street, in a way, in terms of the way they've, they've done it. And it says, the immortal little ships were the Battle of the Atlantic, which of course raged really from sort of from late 1940. Uh, through really to about 1944. Um, these boats were absolutely critical to combat the U-boat menace and all the merchant ships crossing the Atlantic. And the great thing about these is they weren't that big as a ship, even though the model was very big. Um, and so there were hundreds of them produced and they were used by the US Navy. There, there were British, um, most of them were made in the UK, I think, but some were done under licence in the USA. The Canadians used them, a lot of Canadian Royal Navy uh, Royal Canadian Navy used them, and subsequent, all countries all over the world have used these these ships, all over the place, South Africa and Australia and New Zealand and well beyond. They've been a, a brilliant ship, really, so they were a good ship. So why don't we have a look at what we've got? And they've got a beautiful Roy Huxley artwork. I'll zoom in a bit more. Now, today is going to be difficult because this box is huge, as you can tell. It's massive. But it's a nice Roy Huxley artwork. Um... Now, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the Matchbox ships. I've only got, I think, one of them. In period, I think I had two, maybe three max, because I just wasn't that interested in ships. Um, but, again, the artwork on them was absolutely stellar, really. And, again, it's, it's pretty much all Roy Huxley. Um, but let's just have a look at what we've got. I'll zoom me back out a little bit again, so you can get some idea of the, the behemoth of a model that this is. This is big. Actually, when I turned up to meet Jason, he handed it over because he didn't want this to go in the post, so we met up, uh, which was nice. Great to meet him. And uh, <laughs> I said to him, I said, uh, it's a beautiful day today. It's this morning as I filmed this that I actually met up with him. I said, I was going to come out in my sports car. And I said, well, I wasn't quite sure if it would fit. Well, it wouldn't have fitted. I was like, whoa. And it filled his boot. And I've luckily had my other car is um, an estate car. Uh, not a huge one, but it's big, big enough. Uh, and it filled his entire hatchback in his car, and it pretty much took up most of my, my estate car back as well. So it's not small, it's a big, big thing. So on the side, and this is definitely worth seeing. Now look at this, some things that are fairly unusual here for Matchbox. It's PK901, but look at this, look at this. With this model, you get the joy of six. Six colours? This is unheard of. I think I think they did four colours on the brown range, the the big, is it the brown range or the the green range, the green range, the big ones, Spitfire, Messerschmitt, Dauntless. I think that was four colours. This is six, and that is remarkable. So, given the subject is so big, I think that makes a lot of sense. But look at the art. You know the way that they portrayed it is really rather good, to be honest. It does seem to represent to me a, a bit of an engineering step up. Um, we'll, we'll find out if that's true or not later. I'm struggling to manoeuvre it, as you can tell. This is going to be a bit of a nightmare, actually, because it's even for my desk, it's it's a monster. Um, so I'm just tilting it round. I'm going to have to zoom right out to if, if you see this properly. There we go. Now then, there you go. You can see the whole shit now. And then there's this um, at the back end. It shows it in sort of a three-quarter view there which is very very nicely done so they, they portrayed it well and then on the other side true to their form uh, in this almost uh, Tamiya style that, that, that their latest stuff was uh, it says 1979 Leslie product so this is the genuine Matchbox product not one of the later iterations HMS Blue Bell which is the the British Royal Navy uh, HMCS Her Majesty's Canadian Canadian ship Snowberry uh, or, turn it again to try and get this in, USS Saucy. So that's the United States Navy. Wow, what a monster. This is... <laughs> Jason said to me, he said, oh, I think you'll do a great job of it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to handle this because it's so big. This is the biggest box I think I've ever had on the desk. It, it's actually it's similar to that huge Tiger tank. Uh, I think it's actually an inch or two longer, but it's obviously it's not as deep. That was quite square. 
But it's a monster box. It's a monster box. I'm going to be very, very careful with it. Uh, even though he says he's going to, oh, actually, he could do with a little bit of a uh, little bit of repair there. You can actually, it's just part of the company. Don't think Jason's too worried about that. Although I suspect he'll keep the box. I don't think he's going to bin it anytime soon, even when he does build it. So what have we got? We have got a massive, and that is the biggest matchbox construction leaf I've ever seen. We've got some decals he tells me are probably no use, which is normal for matchbox, let's be honest, if they're old. And then, oh, I don't know where to begin with this really, it's just a huge hole and I feel, I feel I'm having a, I feel I'm having a light-headed moment already. Let's just, uh, let's move this out of the way just for some space. And we will see if, if we can actually give you an idea of the flavour of it. So what we've got here is the flags. Oh, these are nice actually. These are these um, pendants. Um, various pendants. Uh, obviously they use pendants in these naval services for messaging. Well, they certainly did, did in the Second World War. Uh, and this is like, on a, it's like a fabric. And this is really rather nice actually. Uh, international code flags, 172nd scale, flower class Corvette. Okay, so obviously we've got the Royal Ensign, the US um, Stars and Stripes. Um, haven't got a Canadian one. I guess the Canadians tended to go with the Royal Ensign. Same thing, actually. I think I'm right in saying that. And then we've got numeral, numeral pennants, and then, and if you're very nautically minded, some of you watching may actually know what these all mean, and I have no idea. I've got to be honest. But aren't they nice that it's in this like um, like a fabric, almost like a silky material? I think he's on a self adhesive, so it's like a self adhesive silk. So that looks usable, I'd say. That's very nice. Pop that to one side. Uh, the decals, yeah, well, I'm not going to touch or interfere with these in any way because I think that, as Jason has said, I think that they are <laughs> well past their sell by date. Frankly, any matchbox kit from 79 is probably, you're probably not going to end up using their decals. Anyway. Let's have a look at the instructions. Now, I've got a feeling he told me, I've got a feeling that he said that there was a separate colour call out sheet, which I may not have found yet. I that's separate, I if I look in, in, integral into that, really. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be, it must be integral. Okay, let's have a look then. So, as I say, um, this is not a kit I've seen before. I've never handled it before. I've seen it in the model shop. Around right about 1980, I remember it coming out and being in the model shop. I say, not being a great ship lover, it didn't really excite me, but it has a reputation, a very positive one. Uh, and people seem to love it, you know, and say that actually, it, uh, as Jason pointed out, he said that uh, obviously Ravel have reissued it because it's fairly unique. Um, and and Hanans, the uh, model supplier in the UK, they still have all sorts of aftermarket products you can buy for it. You know, railings, um, photo etch, all sorts of parts for the guns and the flags and uh, and the masts. And, and, and there's lots and lots you can actually buy for it. So, I mean, obviously you could buy the Revell version and then you could could make it up. But it's a popular kit. Quite how they sold, I don't know, because I suspect a lot of people were like me, rightly or wrongly, uh, and didn't actually buy it because they weren't interested in the subject. But those of you that like naval subjects, it seems to be quite a decent kit, really, especially of its time. So, let's have a look. Uh, we've got many, many different languages, of course, typical matchbox. Um, strangely, it seems to be starting with Spanish, uh, or is it Italian? I might actually be. I'm not the best at languages. It's definitely Italian, or I think it's Italian. But it shows, first of all, the actual finished item on its stand. Um, um, basically, giving you a guide, an index guide to the actual instructions. So we will. If that repeats. So, I mean, the images are, they speak for themselves, really. So, we won't worry about the language here. Um, original Corvette design is number one. Two, the flower class Corvette. And the main differences are a lot more armament, basically. Uh, I think it's a bit, there's a bit more superstructure, a bit more equipment. Uh, and then there's this, um, 
Number three is the Southern Pride. Hmm. Okay, well, when we get to the English, we'll not have to figure this out. Um, then we got it in French, Spanish, uh, yes, that's the Spanish, Japanese. Mm -hmm. Nice images, just look at these images. Aren't they nice? The launch of RCN Moose Jaw, Flower Class. Ontario, Karen, Canada. So clearly they were subcontracted to Canada as well to be built. So they're obviously building these all over the world, really. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if this is an export model in terms of the way that the, you know, the languages are not... We haven't come across any much English yet, to be honest. HMS Bluebell. And it's, t it's just different layouts on the different versions, really. Um, sl slightly worrying to me that HMS Bluebell, Royal Navy, only have a very small number of life rafts visible there. Whereas the Canadian version, uh, HMS Snowberry, seems to have more. Like they care about their sailors a bit more. That's a bit worrying. <laughs> uh, USS Saucy. Uh, what are the other differences? Oh yeah, actually the, the anti... Um, the sort of torpedo, sorry, torpedo, the um, depth charges, the layout of the depth charge and type seem to vary from version to version. You see that, that's back up the poop deck, isn't it, in the back end? I'm not sure if it's technically the poop deck, but it's the stern, isn't it? Uh, the stern, you see, I'm getting, I'm getting into these nautical symbols and terms, Jason, I'm not completely ignorant. <laughs> Just 90%. Uh, construction symbols. Quite nice laid, laid out this, they've gone to a bit of trouble with it. But they just haven't put the English in. There's no English, is there? So there's no English description here. That's a little bit disappointing. It's almost like this is an export model, I'm pretty sure it is. There is no English when you go through in the first... Uh, it gives the history of the, the different versions. There's no English, so it's definitely an export version for sure. Anyway, so you start off with... Uh, okay, you've got the hull. Well, it's, it's a forward hull and a rear hull. Um, well, there is on one side, anyways. And is this side just one piece? A two, B two. Yeah, it's that's a little confusing, but yeah, it's it's not making it terribly clear. But um, there is in fact a front and rear section to the hull. Then you've got your rudder and your screws. Or is it single screw? Single screw, I think it is. Uh, so that's pro propeller and the drive shaft for the propeller with the, uh, the sort of spinner at the back. Then you have a, an assembly of the display stand. I should have pointed out, you obviously got these, uh, these bracing uh, beams that go across uh, between the two hull sides to give it strength. Um, then we have got the rear sort of rear deck and the uh, sort of structure of the, uh, the actual uh, interior sections. Uh, complete with a couple of windows there. Uh, and that, that assembly is then going to be brought down onto the hole that you've already built up. And there's a sort of central, s central uh, section of the deck. And then you've got the fore deck at the front there toward the... Uh, uh, toward the, uh, I, I've already got lost. The stern is at the back. What's at the front? Oh, uh, ignorance is kicking in there. Uh, forward. You go forward, you go to the front. Uh, well, it's like the head of the ship, isn't it? It'll come back to me in a minute. <laughs> I've, I've got lost already. And then we've got these, I think the four-inch guns, anti-aircraft guns that they, um, or is that the pom-pom gun? And that's the pom-pom gun. I'm sorry, anti-aircraft gun. Again, because there's no description in English, that's a little bit of a shame, actually. It's just a bit frustrating. Uh, I don't know if Jason realised that. I'm sure, I'm sure he probably did, because he knows about ships. And he probably knows about them anyway. But... Yeah, so you've got your anti-aircraft gun here, and you've got your um, your ladder, access ladder up to it as well. And it's in a, an emplacement with a mounting. And then we've got these little sections here where they've got like um, uh, breather pipes, exhaust funnels, etc. coming up from below. And that's definitely a, a Twin Vickers machine gun there. You can probably see Twin Vickers. And then a magazine drum on the top. 
And then we've got lots of parts that you probably won't be able to name, but you've got all sorts of masts, and that's the flag mast there. Uh, and then you've got this emplacement going in, uh, and then you've got some of the anti-aircraft guns being placed in here. Um, you've got these sort of uh, various uh, sort of strengthening beams toward the back of the ship, toward the stern. Um, well, I can't remember what the front of the ship's called. That's ridiculous. I'm just I've lost it already. Um, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of detail, isn't there? Actually, so, you know, for a matchbox kit, I know it's big. Obviously, it has to have some, but. Yeah, kind of more than I was expecting, really. You've got all these, like, uh, presumably like ammunition boxes that are lying down the side of the ship. Uh, you've got those funnels going in. And then the different variants have got different equipment. So, USS Saucy, I think this is, um, I think this is the flasher, uh, communication flasher for Morse code. Again, I'm sure it's got a specific name, which I don't really know, because I'm not very into ships. I'm pretty sure that's the... Uh, like a, a flashing communication light and you've got here you're building up part of the uh, one of the cabins here it's probably going to be the uh, the captain's uh, say the captain's cabin but I don't mean cabin I mean um, the main bridge I guess of the ship I think yeah I think it is isn't it I think it's going to be the sort of bridge area um, quite a lot of detail going in here, some nice step ladders and things and walkways. Uh, you've got all sorts of, uh, you've, got a little bit, you've got to do a little bit of cutting with the look of it. I'm not sure Matchbox's instructions are the clearest I've ever seen here. Um, it's kind of vague what it's trying to tell you to do there, I think that could have been made a little clearer. They're telling you to remove, because this has got to go in a position, you've got to remove a couple of the, the sort of support ribs at the side of the, uh, on the top of the deck. Uh, and then, or am, am I wrong? It's so vague. No, I'm wrong, aren't I? What they're telling you to do is to cut, okay, they cut these sections that are going to form uh, the sort of uh, support wires that stop anybody falling over off the deck. Uh, and these are the masts, the posts that go between them. That's what they're trying to say. It hasn't, it hasn't been particularly well communicated on. And then you've got these variations between the uh, the US ship, the Saucy, or the Canadian ship, the Snowbury. Uh, and you've got different sort of uh, emplacements, you've got different boxes. Um, I'm not too sure what they are. There's a lot of box sections and cabinets possibly containing ammunition and things like that. Quite a few of those. Um, uh, access ladder. At the top of the access ladder, I think it is there. And you've got another one here, looks like the top of access ladders. Uh, you've got a lot of parts, aren't there? It's, it's quite detailed, isn't it? It's got a lot of parts in the kit. So when you just zoom you back a little. So when you, um, then you're on the main, as I say, it's the main bridge area. And then you've got all these um, various support. There are little vents and there's ladders and... Um, some control boxes, you've got some funnels here, all sorts of stuff going on. And then we have um, the, I think it's the rear, is it the rear or the front, is it? I think it's the front. I'm going to have to refer back to the pictures. Uh, the front of the, the bridge support section where you've got the superstructure. And uh, you're building all that up as well underneath. Then we have another um, and here we've got, I think, the Oilerkin cannons, which are anti-aircraft guns, anti-gun, anti-aircraft or anti-ship. Uh, quite a hefty cannon. I think they're about, I think they're about a uh, twenty millimeter, if I remember correctly. I think these are the, like the ones they fitted on the Spitfire, in fact, on the Mark Nines. Um, they are, they pack quite a punch. So those are going into an emplacement there. It's going to be fitted ultimately onto the deck. Uh, you've got a couple of masts, some more funnels going in here. Um, I, I'm a little surprised that Matchbox weren't a bit more descriptive, I suppose that they weren't at the time, but given that the complexities of the kit and the number of parts, I'm surprised they didn't say a bit more. Uh, and here you've got this, like, uh, I think it's an observation tower in actual fact, with armour plating around it. I think that's what it is. Um, it could also have a searchlight in it, I suspect. I'm not 100% sure. 
and then we've got this uh, superstructure going on top of this the, the section that you've already built and that's going to be all coming together so it's actually like a mezzanine almost isn't it you can see there's got ladders there that are coming in then here you've got uh, one of the types of depth charge like a, a flying mine that's, that's fired at out into the air and drops into the water to take on the U-boat menace and then here we've got some uh, and this looks like the winding gear I think it's for the anchor in fact I think it's the mechanism to wind the anchor in unless I'm mistaken it certainly looks that way uh, and then we have the uh, yes I think I'm right I think I'm right indeed uh, and then there's, um, there's there's one for winding it out one for winding it in I think and also there's tow line, this is um, the mooring, uh, and again, not being a very nautical man, I'm not quite sure what you call them, but the mooring stumps that you put your ropes on when you're mooring it in the harbour. Um, so there's, they're on both sides of the ship, of course. Um, and, yeah, here we've got... Uh, some more of these uh, sort of anchor anchor chain points for when you want to uh, immobilize the ship in harbor um, so there's quite yeah there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot going on here to be quite honest uh, I'm just checking something as I am talking because I'm uh, wanting to be sure of my terminology. The bow. It's the bow. Oh, why didn't why didn't I remember that? Dear oh dear. Just be getting old. So this is at the bow end obviously and you've got all these anchor points. Then you've got the chain itself for the anchor and the anchor is coming in here. <laughs> Which looks really cool. Uh, it's, it's got twin anchors on both sides of course so that's why we've got the double winding mechanism. And then on the blue bell you've got uh, I think there's going to be slightly different gun emplacements that you're preparing for on the, the superstructure. And then we've got, this is the main gun. This is the, the main gun is a 4-inch gun. Uh, obviously it's not a battleship, so it's not like 16 inches or something, but it still packs quite a punch. So it's basically an artillery piece, you know, uh, in, completely in a, an armoured uh, sort of turret. Almost like a tank. In a rotating emplacement, we have complete the access ladders here, and then over here we've got uh, the, the sort of mounting position that this is going to go on to, and then we've got the main funnel here, actually coming up from the engines, the ship's exhaust basically, complete with all the access ladders to go on it, and there's lots of uh, se sort of secondary vents pipes as well that go on there, secondary funnels, and then you've got what looks like the crow's nest. Well, the man's got to climb up and stand in there looking out for enemy ships or U-boats. Then you're going to bring all this together with the, the main funnels. Main and secondary funnels going in here. God, it's, it's quite a complicated build, isn't it? There's a lot of parts. And then this is showing you how it will look. You've got your crow's nest, you've got your crow's nest access ladder, the access ladder up the main funnel. And then the various different types of ladders, access ladders. And then we get into some of the armaments, and this is the different types of depth charge which are being used. Uh, those, I think, are the Royal Navy ones. And then you can see the, the American and Canadian has slightly different positioning of them. Uh, fairly subtle difference there. Then we've got some more access ladders going up from the main sort of rear stern deck. Coming up, and then you've got your lifeboats being created here. Those look quite impressive. So you've got lifeboats and life rafts. I think I'd rather have a lifeboat, thank you very much, rather than inflatable. And then it shows the positioning of those. And it does vary depending on whether you're building the uh, Royal Navy version or indeed the American or Canadian one. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then we've got some what looks like observation points and the mounting points for those life rafts. Again, there are subtle differences in the way they're positioned and the spacing of them. Um, then we've got, these are basically the rails and racks now for the, the roll-off type depth charge that the Royal Navy use at the back. 
they roll off the stern of the ship, just dropping into the water, as well as the ones that are fired up into the air. On the American and uh, Royal Canadian uh, Royal Canadian Navy, they have uh, these, these a lot more of these firing ones that are fired up. This is very much the Royal Navy style, and the way that they are positioned is slightly different, as you can see, between the Royal Navy version and all the U.S. struck Canadian version. And then you've got the whole assembly coming together here and being put in position at the actual stern. Uh, and it has an opening, like a big opening hole in the stern. They roll through there and drop into the water to drop down to the U-boat below. And then finally, it shows you the layout of the, the rigging. Oh, it fills me with fear straight away. <gasps> Look at that. It's almost like a wing, wings biplane, there's that much rigging. Look at that. And you can see, in fact, that the... Uh, the Royal Navy one and the, um, the Canadian one, both basically Royal Navy, um, I've got one set, uh, one design of rigging and a different setup. I'm just trying to see what the difference is. It's almost like a can you spot the difference uh, competition. Yeah, there's a bit more actually on the on the American one. It's got a little bit more, a bit more over here. This is additional. That's additional. It's not on the Royal Navy variant. And then finally, you've just got the rear view showing the three different variants. Uh, HMS Bluebell, Snowberry, which looks very similar, I've got to be honest, um, of the American variant. And then we have our paint colour guide here at the side, which is quite, quite extensive in all the different colours. Well, there's a lot to it, isn't there? I'm quite surprised. I mean, there's a lot of parts in this. It's not just big, you know, the Matchbox, to give them credit, they didn't dumb this down in the way you might expect them to, because... This is clearly not aimed at youngsters, really. It's not, is it? This is more aimed at the, the serious modeler. And it's quite a serious play by them in 1979 to go for something like that. They're appealing to a different audience to what they normally do. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to get the parts out and we're going to have a look at them. Um, we're going to start with, and Jason has warned me that some of them are warped. I don't, I don't think this is, and this is okay. So this is basically the bow. Look at this, it's huge. Huge! It's massive! So here we've got the bow on the, here, we're on the starboard side. And look at that flash in a matchbox kit! I've never heard of that before! I think we can forgive it, it's not on the part, is it? Well, not apart from there. We'll let them, uh, let them off. Uh, we were debating about this, Jason, now, trying to figure out in our minds whether we really thought this was actually... whether it was actually injection moulded by a matchbox or whether they in fact got somebody else to do it for them. I wonder if this wasn't, if this didn't have someone like Heller involved, because of course they were French, and Matchbox had a big market in France. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know, I don't understand any rumours, but it just seems that the, the it's on such a scale, this kit, unlike everything else they did, it's not inconceivable that they didn't go out, out to a third supplier. <clears throat> you've got the hull here, and you've got like a quite a big lip on the keel. It's very substantial, you know. Um, yeah, it's uh, and it's thick. It feels really strong, good quality plastic, typical matchbox. And it says over here, I'll zoom you in for this, you can see it with your own eyes. And it's 1979, Lesney Products uh, and Company Limited. There you go, the genuine and original matchbox company. There we go, 1979. Isn't that nice? That's really is meaty. Let's put that on one side for a second. And then we've got, we have here, uh, the stern, the stern section of the hull, which is, again is absolutely huge, and if anything is the same size, if not bigger. Now, Jason said to me, I'm very nervous about this, he said, why don't you just cut off that front part and, uh, and interconnect it on the video for your viewers? And I said, really? Your solicitor's not going to be in touch with me, you know? So he wants me to do that, so I'm not going to cut them both off. But let's just do one side, just to give you an idea of the scale. I think we'll go with the starboard side, which has got less flash on it. I'm going to have to be a little bit careful, because this is a huge, huge sprue. I'm sure about this. <laughs> this is more than I bargained for. Normally, if I was to suggest this, somebody would be straight on the phone to the police, you know? This is a very thick... Bit of sprue. I'm going to be using my Tamiya cutters. 
I'm just going to take that off and not not both sides, just one. But he's going to build this, so that's why he's not he's not bothered. So let's just have a little play with this. This is a bit trickier here. This way, where the uh, the sprue flashes. Okay, I broke I broke that off on the right side. I broke it on the uh, <laughs> the sprue gate contact side, not on the part. So it, it doesn't need any excess clean up. I think I've done that in a way that makes it easy for him. It doesn't damage the actual critical part. So let's just do this for you then and put the two together. It's kind of like a jigsaw, isn't it? Mean, like a jigsaw almost. Look at the way it goes together. <laughs> it's wild. It's where it's where the planking is essentially the plating. Can you see that? So it's going to go together like that, and it does actually fit pretty well. It's not bad actually, it's not bad at all. You get that really well glued up and, you know, there won't be much of a seam there really. I think that's going to be a fairly decent join. It's solid, yeah? So on the other side, whoops, it's, it's less to see on the other side, but you can see it's a good firm... You're going to have to put plenty of glue in there, that's for sure, and really make it bond up. But you. It's a good design because you've got a big contact area as you can see. You see me in a bit more. There's a huge sort of contact uh, zone for the parts to actually glue together. So yeah, you'll be fine I think. Well, look at that, isn't it big? So that gives you an idea, zoom back again, <coughs> the, the size of this model ship. It's significant, you need to have a, quite a decent cabinet for this. Look at the size of that. Ah, uh, like Daniel Craig said, a bloody big ship. Yeah, <laughs> told you. Look at that, huge, isn't it? I think they did it quite cleverly to do it along the planking. Yeah, I think with a little tiny, tiniest wisp of filler, and that will be a perfect looking join, actually. This end, of course, you can see where the prop shaft is for the, uh, the propeller screw at this end, which is, uh, yeah. Again, it's very neat, it's very good thick plastic is this. Look at, look at the section of it there. It's not thin, it's not weedy, it's proper. Very significant. So there you go, so that's the hull. And that gives you an idea of the sort of proportions of the sort of size and dimensions of the ship as a finished model. Quite impressive, very good. Anyway, I'm glad I did that in a way that uh, I didn't end up damaging the actual part or biting into it at all. Just needs a t just a fraction of clean up, Jason, and we'll be fine. Now then, what have we here? So we've got this is what the, I think this is the central deck area, and this is where he said there was a little bit. I think this is one of the ones where he said there's a tiny bit of warping. Um, but again, I'm quite impressed with the way they've got the the surface. Um, uh, the sort of effect of the the planking on the surface of the deck. If you look here, can you see that? Look at the planking. Isn't that good? Isn't it nice? That's very realistic actually, wooden planking on the surface of the deck. And obviously there's all these positions and connection points for all the various um, bits of the superstructure. Uh, Nice colour, so that's the second colour that we've had. Then we have got... We have got a bag with a few interesting parts in it. Just bear with me, I'll zoom you back for this. Quite a few bits of screw, I don't think that's totally relevant. Or is it? I'm, I'm, I'm hurling this to one side like it's a bit of screw. I just realised I don't think it is. It's got nasty, that's got nasty warp in it, hasn't it? I think this is one of the ones he was talking about. A little bit warpy. See that? <laughs> yeah, so we won't worry about that one too much. We'll leave that in the box, I think. But look at this. Here we've got some... Again, it's, it's nice detail, you know. You think this is 70 second scale, so these life rafts are quite big, in fact, aren't they? You know, if you compare that to the sort of size of my, my thumb, you can see that there's some proper size to it. So I'm guessing you get about six... Six men, maybe even eight men in one of these. And they've, they've portrayed it really well with all the rope. The rope effect on the life raft underneath as well. Isn't that good? It's 
got a real lifelike quality to it. You've got some interesting riveting and plating here. Oops, my focus has just gone a bit awry. Uh, riveting and plating down the sides of the superstructure. <coughs> and you have got this sort of a the sort of captain's observation tower here. And what else have we got? Um, that's this is part of the gun emplacement, which is yeah, it's coming out looking. Uh, uh, some, there are some injector pin marks around, round and about. That's I'm just trying to remember if it's that way. Pull the other way. I think it's that way up. So probably okay, aren't we? Don't think it's a problem. Yeah, because. Yeah, the other side, I think, well, as you look at the sprue, this is the side that you actually use and is visible, and the ejector pins are all on the opposite side. But there's some lovely parts there, you've even got some uh, some depth charges here, look. Depth charges. The ones that, the ones that fire up. And then you've got the base uh, of your rubber uh, life, life raft. That's the actual base, uh, flooring of it. I like it, it's really nice actually. Yeah, they've got to a bit of effort with it for sure. Then we've got another one of the uh, colours. We've got, oh, we've got Shane here. Oh my lord, what have we got here? I thought it was a piece of jewellery then. So we've got a very, uh, I presume this came in the kit, a very rusty looking, unless this is something Jason's bought separately, I'm not quite sure. We've got, we've got major problems with my camera, there we go. Uh, yeah, look at this chain. So this is obviously the chain for the anchor. Doesn't it look realistic though? That's very cool. I like that. So I'll pop that over there. <coughs> then we've got our lifeboats, the conventional type lifeboat. And it's actually a proper boat as against a life raft, complete with, again, it's got some, uh, <coughs> some high grip floor area within it. And then here, obviously, this is the tops, top section of it. I think I'm, that would be my preference if I'd just been torpedoed. I'd rather be in one of those than a rubber boat. But look at the bow section, the bow deck area. Look at this beautiful planking effect that they've got. Now that looks a bit special. That's probably the most impressive thing I've seen so far. And I'm quite liking most of it, to be fair. Oh, that looks great, you know. You get that nicely painted up correctly with a bit of wood effect and a bit of a wash on it, a bit of a grimy wash. <coughs> Maybe a little bit of saltiness uh, to try and uh, show the salt, salty sea water effect and that will look brilliant. Over here, this is I think the sort of central deck area again. <coughs> Excuse me, planking. Lots of them planking. That's amazing. It's really, really well done, isn't it? <laughs> Fabulous. And then you've got all these sort of side sections around these, uh, the internal sort of uh, superstructure and cabins, etc., where you've got more planking. And that's been finally done. I mean, this is really good for Matchbox, I've got to say. This is why I'm, I'm just suspicious that this, that somebody helped them with this as a manufacturer. I just, I could, I could be completely wrong, of course, but I'm just not so sure this was actually manufactured at the usual site in London. It just feels different. Uh, it's almost like, it's almost like Tommy I had handed it, really, isn't it? In some respects, because it's just got a little bit of, it's a bit more depth and detail than they are used to. Not as basic as I was expecting, really. Right, I'll put that back in there, put the chain. That's my rocket glue on the floor, I think, not to all fly. Trouble is, everything's so huge, it's hard not to, not to knock things over, to be honest. Right, that's that one. Then we have, this is the rest of the deck, and this is where Jason was saying it's a bit warpy. You can actually see, I think you can see it there. I'll zoom you in a bit. If you look at it yeah, in prof side profile, you can see it's a bit of a warp to it. It's not too flat. 
but it's not badly warped. I'm sure with a bit of heat that'll come good. And again, there's lots and lots of really nice planking all the way to the to the stern of the ship. And obviously where these lines are, that's where the uh, the depth charge launching racks are actually mounted. But look at the planking, isn't it good? It just gives it a depth. I'm surprised they haven't included any sailors because uh, they, I thought they were... Jason sent me something actually in an email, which I've got a horrible feeling I haven't got with me. It's a bit of me. Just check. Um, and in it there was a, like a secondary paint guide, um, which he didn't actually have. And... No, I'm on the wrong computer unfortunately. It's on my other iPad, which is a bit, a bit remiss really, not uh, quite my preparation right here perhaps. But he did send me, there's a, um, the, the paint, there should be a separate paint guard in it, I don't think it was included in this one. So he has downloaded it basically, and it has, I'm sure there are some sailors uh, figures. Uh, and then here we've got, um, this is like this, uh, like a filament material almost. But it's basically plastic for the rails that go around, the safety rails that run around the ship. The one where I was a little bit confused with the instructions and he was saying use a knife on it. Uh, and there's loads of it in this bag, a huge amount of it, look at that. So that's for the entire ship. Um, more than enough I'm sure. So that's very good isn't it? Excellent. And then we have got another bag. We've got lots of sprues here. Huh. Yes, and we have got some sailors, so yes, I was right. Um, that's why Jason has felt it important to download the missing colour plan. <coughs> Which I may go and rescue in a second, because I feel I'm letting you down by not showing that, actually. So I might just disappear in a few seconds. Gosh, there's bits falling out all over the place. So what we've got here, we've got, here's one of the access ladders. Seems like a mighty ladder for 70 second scale, doesn't it? Look at that. That's huge. <laughs> That's nice. And it's... Um, we've also got a completely... Uh, we've got clear part sprue as well here. Now this actually forms the clear... I quite like this. This, this is the... Oh, careful, careful, careful. Those are very delicate. I've got to be very careful with this. Yes, I don't like the way that feels, like it's going to about to come off the sprue. Oops, I could be in trouble. As I say, Jason is going to build this so we don't need to paint it too much. But that's that's the stand. Can you see that? That's the top, that's the bottom. Well, one end and the other, I should say. And then you've got various parts, like you've got all your portholes here. These are all the porthole glasses. And you've got all the windows. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not being funny, it's not Tamiya standard, uh, <laughs> but it's built in 1979, so it ain't bad, especially for a ship. Um, quite a lot of glass, I've got to be honest. And then rather nice, that's something I didn't spot, it's then got the names for, for the nameplate. I'm going to zoom you right in for this. If you look very carefully, just, you can see the names, so it's saucy. USS Saucy, uh, or the uh, HMCS Snowberry, or the Bluebell. <laughs> Isn't that good? That's really they've done that really rather well, I think. Nicely engraved, you know. Um, I was saying it's not Tamiya standard. Well, be careful with this. What I meant was, if you look very carefully at this glass, you can see. Quite a lot of distortion and flaws in it, but yeah, <coughs> this is um, manufactured quite a long time ago. <coughs> we're talking, uh, for, we're talking forty-five years ago. I think that's not that's not bad, to be honest. So I'm going to pop that there for a second. Then we've got another different coloured sprue here to look at, and on this sprue we have got quite a few interesting items actually. Um, Many of them I probably can't name, but 
yeah, this is a lot of these sort of boxes. We've got the um, the rope anchoring anchorage positions that you get on the deck here, where you actually wind your rope round when you throw a line ashore. <coughs> so obviously there's two, two, one on each side at the front and rear. And then we've got lots and lots of small parts. We've got some fencing here, safety fencing. And we've got um, several of uh, these boxes, that some, of the, some of them ammunition boxes, some of the storage boxes. Uh, I think that's the shielding for the anti-aircraft guns, like a turret almost. Yeah, that's very nice. Okay. Then, <coughs> another different colour. This is a lot of a strange sort of a pucy, pucy sort of sandy colour. And we've got all sorts of things here. We've got uh, various parts of the structure for the actual sort of superstructure strengthening uh, on the lower part underneath where the uh, the bridge is. And you've got more of these boxes, quite a lot of this safety railing, as you can see there. Um, turn it this way, and you've got lots of parts and I've no idea what they are. So, yeah, but there's a lot of parts in this kit. There's a lot of parts in it, that's for sure. And then here you've got your, this is your um, depth charge. Uh, sort of dispensing unit toward the rear and what looks like a couple of grills here Very interesting. and then uh, back to this other sort of pusey colour again and then you've got your sailors now we're going to zoom in on these guys because I mentioned um, I will go and rescue uh, the instructions which tells you they shows you the paint guide so I think it would be interesting to see <coughs> Uh, and you can definitely see these sailors. Look at these guys. These guys have got their helmets on. I think these are the gunners. Uh, but it's nice to have some figures. I like that. Uh, and then you've got what looks like the senior officers. <coughs> Probably the guys are on the bridge, including the captain here. And he looks like a right sea dog, this one, doesn't he? Ah. <laughs> And then you've got some rope. Look at the rope. Isn't that good? That's fantastic. <laughs> these, are, these are going to really add some character to the actual, you know, the, bring some life and um, energise it, animate it. Here's your depth charges. These are the firing type that are fired up in the air. Uh, several of those. And then you've got the more conventional roll-off type here. That go in the rack dispenser at the back. Uh, we then have lots of little ladders and a couple of chimneys. Uh, it looks like a, like a pinion gear, isn't it? That, look at that. Interesting, isn't it? Well, these are really cool. I like, I like this sprue. I do. Uh, it's kind of strange that the end. It's um, that the men have actually come have come away from the sprue. I've noticed there. Don't think it matters though. It's a fairly Solid mountain at the top, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of fine parts on there. It's a nice sprue, to be honest. <coughs> Excellent. Now, what I will do is zoom you back for this. Don't want any green screen, really, do we? No. Well, you'll bear with me because it's very important, uh, so we don't damage anything here. Very important to get this back in in one piece. Can. I thought the clear parts were good. <laughs> okay. Oh, some parts are loose, some loose parts here. I don't lose those for Jason. Right, okay. In fact, while we're on the subject of parts, I think I've got too many out. So, hold me a second. Pretty important that these go back safely, really. It's also important that we always put the 
prevent the detail parts facing away from the other parts and they don't scratch each other. Uh, sounds common sense I know, but it's very easy to get it wrong if you're just not quite paying attention. There we go. So, now we've got some of the bigger parts and again a little bit of warpage, this is what Jason mentioned about warping. <coughs> so you can see here that um, this is the sort of roof of the, uh, the main sort of superstructure um, of the you know, sort of cabin areas where the bridge is. You can see it's got a bit of warp there, so that, that's definitely going to need a bit of heat attention. That's slightly, yeah, slight disappointment there. But look at the uh, the gun emplacement. That's nicely done, isn't it? A big circle. Uh, it's quite a lot of uh, sink marks. I think this is fairly typical of Matchbox in the day, in fairness. Uh, you didn't normally see it that much, but they tended not to make very big kits. On a bigger kit, it becomes a little bit more obvious. Uh, and you can see there, there's also a mounting, mounting point for the anti-aircraft gun, I think it is here. And you've got your main funnel over here. And then turn it around on the other side. Whoa, look at those ejector pin. It doesn't matter, but look at those ejector pin marks. They're huge! I've never seen bigger ones than that. They're massive. Look at that next to my finger. Wow. <laughs> Big. But no, it's a nice sprint. It's a bit warped, unfortunately, that one. It's just um, perhaps the nature of the beast, I think. So, pop that back in there. And then we have a grey sprue here. And this is this I like because it's got the, the screw on it, the actual propeller. Look at that. That's nice. And this dark grey. And then you've got all these other parts like the main mast, which is absolutely huge. That's the main mast. Look at that. Massive. And then we've got lots of things like ladders. Uh, and we've got... All of your depth charges, and there are many, many depth charges here. <laughs> Look at them all. Cup goes on forever. It's got to be about 80 there, I reckon. Um, and you see on the other side of the, um, the prop screw again. That's quite nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, and a lot of these finer parts. Uh, parts of the uh, the mast that has the crow's nest and etc. Um, did we actually see the crow's nest? I didn't spot it actually. I think it was in maybe one of the earlier sprues. And then we've got uh, this lighter sprue that's got a lot of these funnels in it. <coughs> many, many funnels here. You can see them all over the place. Look. Different sizes of funnel, every shape and size imaginable. And then you've got the launch rods that are part of these nearly all these things here. This is the actual um, sort of uh, the main body of the depth charges which is like a launch rod with a depth charge at the end of it and it goes down the tube and it's fired out of the tube. Um, here you've got your, this is your light mast which I think is where we have the search light <coughs> and that, sorry that's the rudder of course over here so we've got the rudder, to both sides of the rudder, one side is here, and behind that, there we go, one side there, and that's the other side here. It's a big rudder, isn't it? Huge. And there, yes, that's, that's really it, that's it for the parts. So there are a couple that have come off the sprue, we've got another small, uh, one of the uh, funnels has come off there, and we've got a couple of other interesting parts here. Now if you bear with me a moment, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom you back first of all. Uh, I have to say that I'm actually mighty impressed with this because I, I was thinking I'm going to like this really. I mean okay it's not my subject but I am actually very impressed by it. I am because I think Matchbox made a bit more effort on it you know. There's some detail in here that we haven't really seen from them before. So what I'm going to do, if just bear with me a second, I'm going to go back and look at um, Jason's uh, email me with this additional information that's missing in the kit. Um, so I'm just going to have a look and find, here we go, and find the, I'll, I'll read it to you as he said it to me. He says, kit's a 1979 release and I bought it in either 86 or 
or 87 from the little model shop. In the corner, um, between Stockport and Hazel Grove. Now I, I actually bought, <laughs> we both, uh, I used to live in that area as well, I used to live at Cheadle Hume. Um, and we've both got um, uh, family that are actually buried in the uh, the Poynton churchyard, would you believe, uh, Jason and myself, so we've got a bit of a connection there. Um, but anyway, we both have been shopping in this model shop, I'm not sure it's there anymore, but I got my Apollo Saturn V uh, moon rocket, uh, the Revell, uh, this 72nd scale one, is that right? Or is it 100th scale? 72nd scale, I think. Yeah. Uh, the big one. Um, not Revell's best product, and that's putting it mildly, but yeah, I bought it from the same model shop. Anyway, this is where he got it from. He said, at the t he's talking about in, in period now, he says, at the time it was the most expensive kit he's ever purchased at £50. Um, in today's money that would be about £186. It took him about a year to build it, but he had a lot of warp, warp parts, so this is actually typical, for, even from new. It's not, this is not particularly a bad one, I don't think. Missing is the rigging cotton and the paint instructions. They were originally in a booklet, the same size as the instructions, and he includes it here. So I'm going to show you this now, because I think it would be very, very interesting for you to see. And so here we go. So this is the paint guide. Let's say that. Let's see if I can, uh, it actually shows, yeah, it starts off with the instructions that we have seen, and then we get to the paint guide. Here we go. So this is very important for you to see, because this is... If you do want to buy one of these, you mostly find one on eBay. This should be included in in the kit. So I'm just going to have to move that plastic. So I have room to get this into the centre of the frame for you. Can we see that? Yes, we're on full brightness. So here we go. So this is HMS Blue Bell. And then you've got it shows the different <laughs> the men with the ah so the men that's one of the, the uh, poses the man's got he's got actually got that rope in his hand so that's very interesting. Uh, then you've got the HM, HMCS the Canadian version the Snowberry, and uh, it's it's just highlighting different colours and different subtleties that are not on the Royal Navy version. Again, you've got HMS Saucy with completely different scheme altogether, different colouring. And it's all there, you know. It's all there. What you need, different different options on in terms of the camouflage on the ship. And then this is the bit I like where it shows these men. <laughs> now I was a bit worried when Jason sent me this. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. This first chap on the right, I didn't notice it on the plastic, but it looks a bit obscene. It looks like he's hand down his trousers. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, we'll move on from that. <clears throat> um, I might go back and find that, that that chat because it seems a bit odd. Let me just actually see the plastic. I want to I want to be sure it's perhaps just a, a printing error or something like that. I think it might be a, an interpretation problem rather than anything uh, anything a bit more sinister, shall we say? And just while you're looking at that, I'm going to look at the part. Uh, it is. It's it's kind of the way they've printed it. They haven't really. It's because they haven't really shown the flesh of his hand, of his right hand, correctly. Uh, there's nothing. No, there's nothing sinister. <laughs> his hand isn't down his trousers. It's absolutely fine. It's just the way it shows. You can see what I mean, can't you? Look at that. It seems jolly strange to me. Very, very odd. The way that they've portrayed him. I'm talking about. Sorry. I'm ahead of myself there. I'm talking about this chap here. On the right, the one on the right. Just looks a bit strange. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, and then you got all the guns, and obviously you got the winding equipment. So you might not be able to see it. A bit of trouble with my camera today, as usual. It's a bit slow on me. And there we go. So yeah, so you can see the wind. You got the winding mechanism here uh, for the uh, for the anchor chain, and then you've got the different types of uh, communication. Um, there's, there's a name, isn't there, for the uh, for the SOS and the, the communication flashlight? I just can't think what it is. I'm sure Jason will tell us. Um, then we've got our anti-aircraft Oilikin cannon, uh, sort of different, sort of slightly different styles to it. And then here we've got our 
Here we've got our depth charges and the paint cards with the depth charges. So they don't tell you a huge amount, and then you've got your four inch gun on the right there. That's the main gun. So they don't tell you a huge amount of paint detail, but at least they do give you the, the figures uh, and they show you exactly how they should be painted. So you need that, obviously. So that, that guy is really, as I say, it's, it really should be included um, in, the, in the kit. Uh, normally, of course, Matchbox, they always have a separate paint, colour plan guide, you know. So there we are. So, um, I have to say, um, yeah, I'm actually quite impressed by it. It's, uh, it's impressed me more than I expected it would. Uh, that is for sure. Just got to be a little bit careful for you. Just put that away gently. When I was driving back home, uh, it wasn't very far. It was only about half an hour at home from uh, where I met with Jason. And I had his kit in the car, but I could hear it rattling in the back, even though I was driving ever so slowly. Uh, unfortunately, because of the pothole roads we've got in the UK, we've got very poor roads at the moment. And in my area, is one of the worst, I think, certainly up there, with some of the very poor areas of the UK in terms of potholes. Uh, we have the Cheshire East Local uh, Council Authority, and they are not doing a good job. They're not. Um, but, yeah, so it was jiggling up and down in the car, and I could hear it rattling away. But anyway, there we go. So we've actually got to see, finally, we've got to see the Flower Class Corvette, which I've never seen before. Make sure we don't have any parts that go missing. Everything's back where it should be. Make sure that Jason gets it all intact, as it was given to me. Which is absolutely critical. There we go. And there's some very big parts, aren't there? I mean, these, uh, this whole, the hull is just, you know, I mean, I quite like that it's in a big part, a big piece. It's strong, it looks really substantial, you know, when you build that up. I don't think it's, gonna, it's ever going to fall apart or, you know, you just need to have some mighty powerful glue and lots of it, that's all. But I'm sure something like, I think if it was me building it, I'd probably be going for the, the Tamiya white glue would be the one that I'd probably choose. So that's where we're at with that. So, what an interesting uh, review. I've certainly enjoyed looking at that, I have to be honest. Um, I'm going to pop it back together. Oh, in that huge box. Just put it in a moment and we'll have it back on the desk. Just a feat of athletics in itself, almost. Oh, here we go. There it comes, here it comes. There we go. <laughs> it's just massive. Monster. There we go. The flower class Corvette from the Battle of the Atlantic. Isn't it fantastic? Well, I'll give it a rating out of 10 now. I mean, obviously, there's there's a few issues with this particular one. It's, uh, as Jason said, he, he's not bothered. He's going to, but he's got aftermarket for it anyway. Get some new decals and things like that. Um, but bearing in mind it's a very old kit, I'm going to, I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10. Because apart from the warping, there's not much wrong with it really, it's, it's pretty good. Alright, the clear parts are not the greatest, but they are of its time and it's... Uh, there's a lot of detail there, the riveting and the, the plating and the planking of the, the metal plating down the side. I like that. I think they've done it really well. And the way they've got the join, like um, uh, it's like a sort of tongue and groove almost, like a butt joint. They've done it in a way that's quite sensible and, and sort of disguises the joint very well. Instead of having one huge piece that would be very warpy, you can see there was no real warping, no signs of any warping on the actual uh, on the actual hull sides at all. You know, I mean, I could have started building it all up, couldn't I? <laughs> put in the decking, but you get you got an idea of the proportions. It's a monstrous kit. So yeah, I'm very impressed with it. I've enjoyed looking through that. I like the little men as well. The sailors are good. Um, you know, the the, uh, the depth charges and the chain. Uh, that's very impressive, all the chain work for the, uh, for the anchor. Right down to the railings on the side, very impressive. Yeah, so thank you very much to Jason from Model Kit Stuff for loaning it to us so we could all have a look at this. And I say, I've never had it on the channel before, so it's completely new to me. I've enjoyed that. Yeah, a much nicer model than I thought it was. Um, and he, he said it was £50 back in '86. so when it came out, it actually have cost when it came out. It must have been perhaps £12.79, perhaps it's more than I thought. <coughs> it's got to be £10 to £15, hasn't it, I think. 
Well, there we go. Nine and a half out of ten. Thank you very much. Hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Give me a ten out of ten with a like. And, uh, yeah, it certainly is a bloody big ship, as Daniel Craig would put it. Um, I mean, you, you need to have quite a decent cabinet to get that in, don't you? It's, it's a monster, really. But, you know, with a bit of aftermarket, like, say, Jason's going to build it. And I think he might even have some sort of group build going on, which is... I don't approve of that. But, of course, most people like him, I think. I've got examples that are probably not, not mint, you know. And I've said it before, I've got, with some of my uh, Matchbox collection or stash, if you're going to build one, build build one that's a bit rough, you know, that's the one to go for, isn't it? Um, and I'm sure he'll, I know what Jason's uh, standard of modelling is, very high indeed, very high. And he'll do a lovely job of it, and it'll, and it'll, it'll almost be like an advert for this product, you know. So, good luck to Jason with the build. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it interesting. That's really, um, that's the icing on the cake for Matchbox May. I haven't got many others to do, I don't think, really, to be honest. Um, but we have got other videos coming up in the near future, which may interest you anyway. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it of interest. And until I appear again, stay well, stay safe. Thank you for your time and watching. And I hope to see you again in the very near future. Till then, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. And bye for now.